Below are key facts about Aramco. History. Explorers from the Rockefeller family's Standard Oil Company struck oil in Saudi Arabia in 1938. The venture became known as the Arabia American Oil Company and crude oil production hit 500,000 barrels per day in 1949. By 1980, the Saudi government had bought out all the original shareholders and owned 100% of the company. Eight years later, the Saudi Arabian Oil Company, Saudi Aramco, was officially established. Aramco has fueled decades of prosperity in Saudi Arabia. The kingdom is the de facto leader of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, helping engineer price moves on world oil markets. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman wants to diversify the Saudi economy away from oil. Announcing plans for an Aramco IPO in 2016, he said the kingdom must end its oil addiction to ensure it was no longer at the mercy of commodity price volatility. Oil Reserves Aramco had 260.2 billion barrels of oil equivalent in 2017, larger than the combined reserves of Exxon Mobil Corp. XOM. N. Chevron Corp. CVX. N. Royal Dutch Shell PLC RDSA. L. BP PLC BP. L. And Total SA TOTF. PA. The reserves have an estimated life of 54 years. Oil Production. The company produced 10.3 million barrels per day, BPD, of crude last year, touting the lowest production cost in the world, at $2.80 a barrel, according to company documents. It also produced 1.1 million barrels of natural gas liquids and 8.9 billion standard cubic feet per day of natural gas. Oil Exports Almost three-quarters of Aramco's crude exports, about 5.2 million barrels of oil per day, were delivered to customers in Asia last year where it believes demand will grow faster than elsewhere in the world. Its Asian buyers include China, India, South Korea, Japan and Taiwan. Its crude deliveries to North America reached more than 1 million barrel of oil per day last year. To Europe, 864,000 barrels of oil per day. Oil refining. To diversify its oil business, Aramco is expanding in refining and petrochemicals with the aim of almost tripling its chemicals production to 34 million tons per year by 2030 and raising its global refining capacity to 8 to 10 million barrels of oil per day from more than 5 million barrels of oil per day. The company produces, refines and exports oil from Saudi Arabia, but also has refining operations across the globe. Aramco's U.S. oil refining subsidiary Motiva Enterprises, Motiv. Ull owns the 607,000 barrels of oil per day Port Arthur refinery in Texas, the largest in the United States. In 2017 the company announced plans for $18 billion in investments in its operations in the Americas over five years. Aramco is also expanding its oil refining and downstream capacity, particularly in rapidly growing countries such as China and India. Aramco had a net refining capacity of 3.1 million barrels per day in 2018. Scale. The state-owned firm is the world's largest oil producer, pumping 10% of the world's supply, and the most profitable company with its half-year net profit rising 12% to $46.9 billion. Last year, Aramco made an annual net profit of $111 billion, over a third bigger than the combined net income of the five super majors, ExxonMobil, Shell, BP, Chevron and Total. With 76,000 employees in 2018, Aramco has energy industry operations, research facilities and offices scattered across the globe, in Asia, Europe and the Americas. It has country offices in Beijing, New Delhi, Singapore, New York, London, Houston and elsewhere. In January 2016, then-Deputy Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman announced that he intended to sell 5% of Saudi Aramco, Saudi Arabia's government-owned oil company, in an international initial public offering, IPO to fund Saudi Arabia's ambitious economic reform plans. He expected to raise $100 billion from the sale, valuing Aramco at $2 trillion. On December 11, 2019, shares amounting to 1.5% of Aramco's value began trading only on the Tatawul, Saudi Arabia's stock exchange. The IPO will, in fact, raise nearly $26 billion for the kingdom, at a price that values Aramco at $1.7 trillion. The events of the intervening four years tell an interesting story of changing global oil markets and dashed ambitions. In an earlier post, I wrote that transparency, valuation, and listing locations were the most important challenges and unknowns in the IPO process. Each of those factors contributed to the scaled-back IPO and will continue to affect the market valuation of the company in the future.
What happened? The Aramco IPO promised to be the largest ever, greatly surpassing the $25 billion offering of Chinese internet giant Alibaba in 2014. Bankers swooned over the potential fees involved, and more than two dozen banks were eventually involved, presenting the company to potential investors around the world. But from the beginning, many investors balked at the $2 trillion valuation and the company flinched at the requirements for listing on the world's most important stock exchanges. The Saudis postponed the IPO a number of times, but a management shake-up in September 2019 was the first step in getting the process moving again. Yasser al rumayan the head of Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, was installed as Aramco chairman. He is likely to bring a more finance-driven approach to managing the company. Khalid al Falah, the previous chairman, was also the country's energy minister, and separating those two roles was a way to assuage investor fears about Saudi government involvement in the company. However, the push for progress on the IPO was derailed in mid-October, when bankers informed Aramco management and Saudi officials that international investors were expected to value the company at between $1.10 and $1.7 trillion, far below the $2 trillion goal set by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Consequently, the Saudis decided to go with a scaled-back IPO on the Saudi stock exchange instead. Transparency and valuation. Same problems, different day. Transparency and valuation have been the biggest challenges since the Aramco IPO was announced nearly four years ago, and they ultimately became the deal's undoing. Aramco is the world's most profitable company. Aramco is the world's most profitable company, with nearly twice the earnings of number two company Apple in 2018. However, Aramco operates differently than the public companies we're all familiar with. Saudi Arabia is the primary swing producer in the organization of the petroleum exporting countries. OPEC, cutting oil production to prop up prices and balance markets when needed. It also keeps oil production capacity in reserve to call upon in times of shortage. These decisions are made for market stabilization and political reasons. A company focused on maximizing shareholder value would be unlikely to act in this way. The decision-making process will not change in the wake of the IPO. With respect to valuation, several factors are currently spooking oil markets and reducing Aramco's perceived value. Oil markets are currently pessimistic about future demand, in the short term owing to the ongoing trade war between the United States and China, and in the longer term due to the world's need to move away from fossil fuels to avert the worst impacts of climate change. At the same time, oil production in the United States is still growing rapidly. Aramco's production costs are much lower than those in the United States, but a price war to push out U.S. producers would be more painful than helpful as seen during the oil price crash of 2014-16. Geopolitical concerns caused more downward pressure on Aramco's valuation. The Saudi war against the Shiite Houthis in Yemen continues, and Iran and its allies have lashed out at Aramco's operations in retaliation. The attacks were also likely intended to send a message to the United States amid its crippling sanctions on Iran. Attacks on the East-West Pipeline in May 2019 were followed in September 2019 by attacks on the Abqaiq processing facility and the Karay oil field. The September attacks were sophisticated and precise, clearly meant to send the message that the facilities are vulnerable. Spare capacity and a rapid repair program minimized the attack's impact on global oil supply, but the Iranians certainly made their point. The international listing falls apart. The reduced valuation of Aramco was the final straw that ended the kingdom's dreams of a huge international IPO. The Saudi government was unwilling to sell shares at the low end of the valuation estimates. Offering a smaller percentage of the company to domestic and regional investors was a reasonable fallback.